Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 9 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, uh, where I just went mining a bunch between episodes. Uh, you can see a bunch of resources have been extra accumulated here, and I found myself a bunch of nickel. So, hey, pro tip, uh, if you were playing on the pack before version 1.2 uh, of the Direwolf20 mod pack, you may have thought that silver and nickel were very, very rare. And... You were 100% correct, they were. <laughs> there was a slight bug with world gen, which caused silver and nickel to have the same rarity as emeralds, which are pretty rare. Uh, so as a result, we uh, we pushed out a fix to the pack, um, and it is now resolved, and the world automatically retro gens uh, some extra silver and nickel. So if you've already mined out or lived in your area, you don't have to worry. You can just go back in your mining cave and you will find, you know, more nickel and silver down there so uh don't have to do anything just update to the latest version of the pack 1.2.0 or above and you will find that nickel and silver are not nearly as rare as they were until recently the other thing i did between episodes was went looking for something that i couldn't find look how far i explored i explored a bunch north i explored a bunch east kind of went west but kind of stopped when i got to like this you know watery you know boring zone uh because lots of ice and water but didn't feel like traversing that uh but kind of really just traveled all around and found absolutely nothing of what I was looking for. I found a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, so I found uh, some seaweed, and I found some bamboo, and I found some kelp, uh, and I found some melons, and I found some rubber wood uh, from a mod called Mer Trees. Uh, but I found no cactus, which is what I wanted to find, because I wanted to make the scanner, uh, which the scanner you can make easily, but if you want to choose your modules, you're going to need some kind of dye, um, aka green dye. I wanted to play with that a little bit, but... Uh, I was mainly going to do it so that I could find the nickel after I updated the pack, but then I said, ugh, I spent so much time exploring that I just said, forget it. I'm just going to go mining and we'll find some nickel. I was, I was hoping I could quickly find cactus, but no luck. So we're going to have to get cactus at some point. Um, luckily, you can make cactus once you get into Batania. So once we get Batania, we can turn slime balls into cactus and then we'll have access to it. Uh, not a big deal. But today's episode, I want to focus on uh, getting some dynamos to get some power going. Uh, probably get some basic RF production happening so we can get a little bit of war processing going on. We can get a little bit of, you know, having some fun with stuff. Uh, what I'd like to do is um, charge up my charging station a little bit with a little bit of fuel. Uh, you can see my, my mining gadget's getting a little low. But there's one more gadget I'd like to make, uh, the last of the building gadgets. It's the opposite of a building gadget. It's the destruction gadget. Dun, dun, dun. Warning, this tool voids blocks. You should know that the destruction gadget voids blocks. I didn't want to make a mining tool out of mining gadgets. Um, however, what I did want to do uh, was I wanted to make a way for you to easily clear out large swaths of terrain because for me, uh, you know, playing around with, uh, with, with like, you know, mining for 15, 20 minutes just to clear out a large area so I can build in it is super painful and boring. So, uh, I decided that I wanted to make an item that would do that for us. And I don't know where I got this green dye from. I had one in my inventory from who knows where. I probably found it in a chest or something, but, you know, anyway. Uh, so the destruction gadget was the solution to that. So I'm going to go ahead and start charging that guy up. Now he needs a little bit more energy than the building gadget because he is, you know, a terrain clearer, not a builder. So he needs a little extra juice. Not a big deal though. Should be pretty easy peasy. Yeah, it's looking good. Almost there. Now remember, this thing does void a block area. If you accidentally void something, you can undo. I think it's just one though. So just keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have to go ahead and figure out how this thing works. So if you open up the UI uh, by shift right clicking, you can see the current mode is one by one by zero. So because it's zero depth, it's not gonna do anything. With one depth, uh, it'll go deep one block. Oh, you wanna hit confirm on that. There you go, and you'll see what block is gonna get voided. So if I right click this block, goodbye, gone. See you later. You don't get it. It's gone. You can undo it, like I said, though. So that's cool. But then you can expand it, right? So if you want to do a much, you know, deeper area, right? I can do something like this and confirm. And notice how it's going to go deeper. Um, you know, we can go, you know, left and right a bunch. And there's a max limit of 16 by 16, though. So you have to keep that in mind. But see? Or you can go up and down some. So 8 by 8 by eight by eight is kind of your you know largest area and then you can go you know as deep as you want 16. so 
pretty cool way, in my opinion, to uh, clear out and, you know, void up a big area. So what I'm going to do is build my traditional dire basement. Those of you who watched the series before know kind of how this works. Uh, I build my 9x9, nine nine, uh, my standard 9x9 nine nine with this kind of layout, and then I build my basement. And that's where we'll throw some of our machines and kind of like hideaway type stuff. So that's where I'll have a lot of my, uh, the things that I don't need to interact with on a regular basis. Um, you know, usually the way I operate is I have like this machine room up here for all my manual crafting, right? So I've got like machines all along the walls and that'll be where I do all my work and, and you know, making things. And then in the basement, I like to have, um, you know, uh, uh, the power generation, maybe like the refined storage or applied logistics system. Uh, that's where I'll also have some of my automation systems, that kind of stuff. So what if we had a depth of one and we went right generally like 16 ish and down one and you can anchor this by the way and it'll like you know show you where without having to keep looking so that makes things nice and then you can right click to clear it out and that doesn't look too bad that looks actually pretty cool so should we go with that does that work or should we go one layer deeper well let's start with that so i'm gonna go deep probably about 15 and then boom with one click we just built a basement how good is that? And hey, look, my lasers. What's up, lasers? How nice, right? That looks like a pretty good basement. Uh, now, if we wanted to, we could easily go, uh, you know, and you can look down as well, so keep that in mind. Um, but if we wanted to, we could we could probably bring my depth up to 1 and my up level up to 15. Does that look cool? Now, what if I brought my up level down to 14? How about 13? Yeah, 14 is probably where I want to be. Cool. And we'll anchor that guy. Undo, undo. Anchor's being weird all of a sudden. Does that feel pretty good? Yeah, I want to I want to make sure I have enough room down here for, you know, something cool. And then what I'm going to do is just well, I can probably just bring it over here and do it. Can't I do this? Now my up level should not be nearly as high again, otherwise I'm going to avoid a bunch of blocks above me. That feels nice. Yeah, once you get the hang of using this thing, it's pretty cool um, and pretty powerful. A nice, quick way to clear out your basement. Um, now, another typical dire trope is building elevators. So we're going to take a look at the elevator mod, which I'm pretty sure is in the pack. Yay! Uh, cool. And Pneumatocraft has some elevators too. We'll have to check those out at some point. But uh, white elevators here are what we're probably going to go with now. How am I for wool? That's a question. That's a question that uh, the answer is not great. Not great at all. We're going to have to get more wool. Uh, but we definitely need a couple ender pearls as well. Luckily, I've been killing endermen between episodes. Anytime I see them, I'm like, yep, I need, I need ender pearls. There's a lot of like early game convenience tools that absolutely just need ender pearls. It's just the way it is. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go find some sheep. Now, do we see any on the map per se? Mm, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to look off in this direction. Um, I'm not going to record this bit. I'll come back when I find some. All right, folks, we're back. Uh, I did not do what I said I was going to do. I got distracted, but I want to make a shrinking tool. Yes. Yes. Personal shrinking device for that matter. I'm going to go charge this bad boy up with some fuel. Zoinks. Lots of RF goes in. Shrinking device ready to go. Uh, if you guys have seen my Forgecraft series, I don't know, I don't know how much I've played with this on, on a lot of YouTube series, but a few of you have may, maybe seen this before. Uh, this tool is super fun. Uh, and there's a reason I got it, and I don't, I've never tried this mechanic of it. But if you right click, right, you can see that you can adjust the size of your character. Um, and then when you shift right click, it will activate the device. So is it raining out there? Yeah, it's fine. So check this out. If I shrink this down to 0.2, which is the smallest you can get. You ready? You ready? Zoinks! <laughs> Look how cool that is. Uh, and you can absolutely fit in some tiny places. Like, you can absolutely fit in one block tall spots, right? No problem there. Uh, you do get a couple, you know, clipping issues, as you can see, through, like, the walls a little bit. But it's not, you know, a big crisis. It's just it's just Minecraft being Minecraft, right? That's just going to happen, and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but you can shift right-click to grow again. And then if you want to go bigger... You absolutely can. So 10 is the most. I'm just going to jump right to the... Oh, oh, hello. Hello. I feel like Ant-Man. It's the best. 
It's hilarious. Um, being this gigantic really is just it's just for fun. I don't think there's any real good point to it. Um, but what you can absolutely do, and I think if you shift click, it'll go down by a full number. So there, there you go. Um, and then zoinks, and then you're nice and tiny. So this is useful for like doing cables and wiring and stuff. And I will, I will 100% be using this for that purpose. But the reason I wanted to get this right now um, is apparently you can shrink animals. If we look at the shrink mod, there's two items, personal shrinking device and glass bottle. Right click on a shrunken entity with a glass bottle to capture. That sounds cool. So what I'm going to do is get a couple glass bottles and then I'm going to go see if I can shrink entities because I don't know if you, I'm assuming I can, right? Like I, I don't know how. I assume left or right click on them with the shrink thing specified and then you'll be shrinking them so there is definitely a sheep over here and i would like to capture him bring him home and then shear him many times and maybe you know get a couple other mobs normally i would use like industrial foregoing to capture mobs but a it's not in the pack yet because i don't think it's out for 118 yet and then b i want to try new things so yeah so do i like right click you or shift right nope that's not it oh hello left click that's cool I shrunk, I shrunk the sheep. <gasps> I picked up the sheep. Glass bottle contains Minecraft sheep. Oh, that is cool. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? Oh my goodness. This is the coolest thing in the world. I shrunk the sheep. That is hilarious. So you left click an entity to shrink it. That's what we learned. Um, that is really cool. I'm going to have to try that a lot. Right, and then I can unshrink him with another left click. <gasps> that is the best. That is the best. Left click shrink. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. And he retains his sheeredness. So I assume it like copies all the attributes of the, that is just hilariously and amazingly fun. Uh, the one thing is it doesn't have a lot of RF storage, so you can't do it like, you know, too much without taking a little nap. But how stinking cool is that? I love it. All right, so at least now we have ways to, like, pick up entities and bring them home. So there you go. Is that cool or what? All right, so let's build a little animal farm. Joinks. Destruction gadget for the win. How cool is the destruction gadget? I'm just saying. So we would want to go left zero and right zero. Yoinks. <laughs> cool. Uh, so yeah, this is basically going to be my uh, animal area now. Uh, let's put you away and you. And I want these to do this. Do I not have any dirt? I thought I had dirt. Did I grab the wrong kind of dirt? I did grab the wrong kind of dirt. What did I grab? I thought I grabbed dirt. Maybe I grabbed grass by mistake. Yeah, this must be what I did. All right, cool. So let's uh, let's bump that guy up. And we might not have quite enough dirt available here, but uh, that'll get the job done. Beautiful. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is have a nice little one of these dudes. Okay. Does that look good? I think so. I think I mapped that right. Perfect. And ta-da, animal farm. And look how many animals I got. Now we're going to have to de-shrinkify them, but place and shrink. Place and unshrink. Oh, and let's also not forget a fence. And what happened to you, sir? Do you need a block update or what's your deal? There you go. Yes, you apparently do. Note, do block updates. Minecraft, please. 
How great is that? All right, so now we've got uh, some some animals to kind of do the animal-y things with. Yoinks. Do I have enough energy to de-shrinkify all these guys? I'm thinking not. Come back here, you. You're too tiny! Gonna have to charge this bad boy up. But hey, at least now uh, I've got a better source of wool. So let's go back to making our basement. So look, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would be remiss if I didn't try this, right? <laughs> it's the funniest thing in the world. Oh, that is just pure comedy right there. It might be hard to shrink him back. There we go, got him. <laughs> you just have to find where the actual bounding box of the entity is. <laughs> Hello, giant sheep. <laughs> Look, I would have been yelled at in the comments had I not tried that. I would be that would be a crime had I not tried to grow them. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Ridiculously large. It would have been a crime. I'm just saying. All right, so I should have enough sheep wool now to do this and make a couple elevators. One of my favorite mods. Ladders are boring. So says the dyer. Ladders are boring. You can you can put one of those like dash direwolf twenty twenty two things on the bottom of that. That is a quote. Ladders are boring. Elevators are cool. Right? Aren't they though? Aren't they? I feel like they are. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tidy up this basement. What would be a nice basement material to be uh to build out of? What do we got in here even? Like cobbled deep slate. We've got a little bit of that still. Uh, scoria maybe. What do we got? What do we got in our in our in our pocket storage tier two? If we wanted to make something look nice, tough. Uh, dark stone. Dark stone might be cool for a basement, right? That could be a that could be a cool basement, dude. Let's try that out. Uh, you exchanging gadget? And no, I don't need my copy and paste. I might need my builder, and I'm gonna put you away, and you also go away. What if we made you out of dark stone? Cause that 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 could be cool, right? Basements are meant to be dark, aren't they? Do do. Oh, yeah, it could be cool. Does this work? I feel like this could work. We got enough of it from mining, right? Now, good. Elevators are tile entities, so they don't get replaced. But if they did get replaced, it would just go into my inventory, right? Right now, everything's going into the this guy, right? All the cobbles going in here. That looks kind of neat, right? And then I'm gonna do you and you. And I should probably do much smaller amounts of you. I don't know, that looks kind of cool to me. Let's turn off fuzzy mode here so that I can replace these guys properly. Though technically they should probably be these guys, but whatever. I think that looks kind of neat for a basement, right? I'm down with that. I'm, I think that's cool. Yeah, no, that should be this material. That looks good. I like, yeah, that's fine. Nice, right? Looking, Dyer's trying to do nice-ish. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna get is a sterling dynamo, and that's gonna require basically some redstone and some iron. So let's get uh, some redstone and some iron. And is that about it? I think I also need a little bit of gold. We're gonna need uh, probably, you know what I wouldn't mind either is a hammer uh, from Thermal. And Thermal is just such a staple of modded Minecraft mods, right? Like it's, Thermal is just, it's it's Thermal, like Thermal Expansion. It's been here forever, I think. <laughs> uh, it is an absolute, just the like go-to tech mod, right? Uh, so what do we need here, by the way? Is it is it, is it smooth stone? Accepts any Minecraft stone. Okay, I was actually smelting some stone. So it looks like this recipe's changed a little bit. It's meant to be a little bit earlier and cheaper. Now, does this guy still need water or no? 
I'm thinking no. So the Sterling Dynamo is the most basic form of power generation in thermal. It's you, you burn coal and you get energy. Very much like this dude, right? Uh, now the other thing we're gonna need is a way to transfer RF around. And for that, I think I'm gonna use pipes. Uh, pipes is a pretty neat mod. Um, it, it has item and fluid and energy pipes, um, and it has a bunch of upgrades and a way to route items and fluids around. Um, so Laser IO plans to have um, fluid and energy transfer. It is not implemented yet. My basic plan for Laser IO is I wanna finish up the item transfer mechanics, add a book by way of patchouli so that people know how to use the mod, and then I will release it. And then I will start working on fluids and energy and redstone. Um, so all of that is a to-do. So there's no way to transfer energy yet with laser IO, but that will be coming at some point soon. Um, so with that said, I think pipes is probably the best route to go. You know, I don't know. The other option would be mechanism, obviously, but we're gonna get into mechanism a little bit later. I, I treat mechanism like a later game mod. You can absolutely start with mechanism, but like I said, if you start with mechanism, there's not a whole lot of reason to do thermal. Um, so I feel like I'd like to, I like to showcase all the mods in my Let's Play series. So I'm doing thermal um, by virtue of the fact that A, I like thermal, it's a really cool and fun mod, and then B, um, you know, we'll get to mechanism later and then I get to show you both. Cool? So that's the plan. So let's look at pipes as the mechanic. Usually thermal has some, some piping stuff, but it's not ready for 118 yet, but it's coming. So pipes is pretty straightforward. Uh, the energy pipe is just a whole bunch of redstone. So let's get, uh, let's get four blocks. And then uh, some energy pipes here can get me two sets. That'll be 32. And this is really pretty straightforward. Now, the only other thing I'm gonna get for now is the redstone furnace. So that's going to need a machine frame, which is gonna need some tin. So I should have some tin. I don't know if I've processed any yet. Did I process tin? Do I have any tin ingots? I have like three. So let's do this. What I've been doing, by the way, at least until we get better processing of stuff, if you get a stack plus two, you will not have any nuggets over here, okay? So a stack plus two will yield no nuggets. Got it? Good. Uh, I'm gonna sleep through this night and then we'll be back. Um, well, actually, no, by the time I sleep through the night, we'll have enough tin to make our first frame. Um, and I've been I've been over here processing more iron and more, uh, I've got some invar, or not invar, nickel as well. So uh, the first thing we want is this guy, right? So we're gonna need some tin gears. Give me some glass. And then we want all kinds of cool stuff. What's that guy? Am I crazy? What is that? Is that a is that a waypoint? It might be a waypoint. I thought I had put a waypoint in that general direction. Okay, cool. It's showing up over there. I noticed this little green dot on my screen and I'm like, what now? Do what? So the machine frame is used to make pretty much all the machines in thermal. And the first machine I like to make is this guy. So we're gonna need some copper gears. Uh, I might. Oh, good. I have copper. And we're also going to need some bricks. So let's cook up some clay. Where did all my clay go? Oh, right. I put it in here. Cool. And since we're in a little bit of a rush. Well, I'm in a little bit of a rush. You guys could just, you know, wait. Or I could just clip the video. But I'd rather just get her done. I'm in a rush. I got things to do today, folks. I'm making a video. Uh, so then you, couple copper gears, and our redstone furnace. Cool, our first machine. Uh, so I'll start with, you know, one of these guys like Hirish, okay? Now he needs RF, so two options. One, we could just stick our Sterling Dynamo right on it and use the hammer here, the Crescent Hammer, to, to rotate it and power it directly. But that doesn't sound fun. What you realistically want to do is power things a little bit more intelligently. So you can use pipes and then you can use this, right? And then we can have more machines and more pipes, and there you go, right? So that's the plan for now. Eventually, this is gonna go in the basement, but not yet. So right now we start throwing energy in there and he's gonna start generating power. Now with pipes, you need to tell it to extract. So we do that and then he starts draining the energy out and putting the energy into here. So Dynamo creates energy, redstone furnace consumes energy, and now this thing can start smelting stuff, which is cool. Uh, the other thing we're gonna need is a pulverizer. So let's make one of those real quick. So pulverizers are the next best thing to make in uh, this mod. And this is gonna help us with ore generation because, uh, well, metal generation really, because it means we can get more metals. Um, it's gonna, like this, do 1.3x, but 
probably faster and less of the whole I have extra nuggets and I get gummed up thing. So that's what we want to, uh, that's the reason we're going to want to make this. So make a gear, make a frame, make a couple gears, and make a coil. Sweet. And now we have a pulverizer. Nice. Boom. Okay, so this guy also needs power. Now you'll notice the Sterling Dynamo, once he fills up his redstone furnace over here, uh, he's going to start building up a little internal buffer himself, and then he'll start slowing down. But he does waste coal, so be aware of that. Sterling Dynamos are not super efficient. Uh, they will waste a little bit of coal now and then, unless that's changed. I don't know if it has or not. Um, but let's go ahead and place down our pipe now, and boom, now he's starting to get power. And the reason I'm building these pipes up top is, again, I'm tutorializing for people who may be less familiar with mods. My Let's Play series has always been a tutorial, so I recognize that many of you know exactly how pipes work, you know exactly how dynamos work. Some people watching this video do not, and they're watching it so they can learn. So, sorry. Uh, hopefully it's still entertaining, though, <laughs> for the longtime viewers of my channel, at least. So we can now... Uh, do cool things. So let's stick uh, let's stick some 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 iron in there. Like we want more iron. Let's start processing it, right? So remember, you stick iron in, and it's gonna um, in the pulverizer uh, it'll definitely make one, and there's a 33% chance it'll make another, right? So in this case, we got lucky. It made another. You can see some information here, like uh, what it does, how much RF it uses. So this machine's using 20 RF a tick. This guy is producing 40. Well, that's good news. It means we're making more than we need. Sweet. And as you can see here on the little tooltip, we're gaining energy, right? Like we are definitely getting energy, which is cool. Um, so now we've got dust, right? We can take this dust and stick it manually into the redstone furnace, but manual is boring. Dyer likes to automate. Luckily, Thermal makes it very easy to move resources from one machine to the next. All we have to do is tell it which sides of the machine should accept or remove items. Blue means accept, orange means output. So if we click on this side, he'll receive items from the right. This side, he'll export items to the right. And this side, he will do nothing. Well, he'll he'll do both. Uh, he can either accept or receive. And this one, he won't push or pull, but he can he you can push items in by like a hopper or other piping mod. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say receive items from the right. And this guy, I'm going to say output items to the left. And I'm going to enable auto output. And when I do that, he's going to automatically push his dusts into the furnace. How cool is that? All right, nifty. Now I'm gonna absolutely use laser IO to automate some aspects of this in a bit, but not yet, we'll do it soon. Um, for now, I just wanted to demonstrate how those things work. Now, before we get too much deeper into this, I would like to get a magmatic dynamo because in my opinion, powering things with lava is a heck of a lot cooler than powering things with coal. Um, and we can pump lava out of the nether and that's what we're gonna do. So in order to do this, here's what I want. I would like to make a magmatic dynamo. I'm first gonna need invar because that's the resource that you need to get stuff. Um, we can make invar manually. We can make it with an induction smelter, uh, but I think the induction smelter also needs invar. So in order to make the invar before you have an induction smelter, um, you can make invar blend, which is two iron and a nickel dust. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some nickel if I've got more of that. And I'm gonna actually turn off the auto output here, right? And then he'll go back to holding on to that stuff. And we can speed him up a little bit. And remember, when you speed him up, it's gonna increase the RF usage, right? So it's it's ticking more, so it's gonna use more energy. So that's a problem, but not too big of a problem. Okay, and then I'm gonna get some nickel. Cool. And remember, you occasionally get double. And then we got invar blend, which we can smelt into invar. Neat. Now I can use that to make an induction smelter, and I can use that to make the magmatic dynamo. Easy peasy. And I probably will in a minute. However, what I would like to do now is figure out where to get lava from. I usually like to go to the nether and get lava. It's pretty common in there. So in order to do that, we're going to need a couple things. Uh, a mod called ranged pumps adds literally one item, and all it does is pump resources, generally lava, and uh, stores it in an adjacent tank. Good times. However, we're also going to need to get that lava out of the nether, so we're going to probably want ender tanks. Ender tanks are also cool. Uh, they, uh, however, need blaze rods, so we're going to have to find some of those. That's going to be a hassle. But everything else is not too bad. That's probably our best bet for now, is to, is to go ender tanks. And then we can pipe the lava out of the nether. So two things. One, we're going to have to go find 
some blazes. And two, we're gonna have to go, uh, you know, do we have enough ender pearls, by the way? How are we for ender pearls? Uh, da -da, we got one. I'm gonna need at least one more. So what that tells me is I gotta hunt some endermen and I gotta hunt uh, a few other things. Cool. All right, so you all get sorted there. One of these days I'll actually pay attention to the resources because I'm still not 100% sure that everything's stable here, but I've made some changes and there's a new version of Laser IO coming anyway, so fun times. So what I'm gonna do is uh, do, 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 and clean up some inventory and then I'm gonna pop into the nether. Well, I didn't really mean to do that, but that's okay. You're gonna continue processing your nickel, right? And we're already, you know, not doing great on power. It's coming back, but Mag uh, Sterling Dynamo is really meant to be like entry level. Uh, for stuff. So let's do this. Let's, uh, if I sort you now in var ingot, I assume you'll land over here. Yes, because you have the ingot tag. See how cool the tag filter is? I love the tag filter. Love it. It's so cool. All right, let me go um, to the nether. So what should I bring with me? Actually, you know what I wouldn't mind doing is maybe getting a little protection in the nether. So if I wanted to, Firestarter, Gilded, Glowing, Pathing, Melting, Protection, Reach. I think Protection is like all five kinds of enforcement. So Strength, Tilling. So these guys, there we go. Blast Protection, Dragonborn. Fire Protection wouldn't be bad. Golden, maybe not bad idea for a little bit of Golden on one of my pieces of gear, just so that like, you know, those dudes don't hate me. Um... Melee protection sounds good. Projectile protection sounds good. And uh, does that sound pretty good, right? Fire. So if I want fire protection, I need seared reinforcements, which is obsidian panes and seared stone. Okay. One pain is how much? 250 millibuckets. All right, so we're gonna need a bunch of obsidian and a bunch of seared stone. And then if I want golden modifiers, that's pretty easy. And these guys, by the way, require defense slots to apply each of these. Um, now, cobalt, ooh, cobalt. Oh, that's going to be a little bit of a hassle. But it's only three nuggets of cobalt per reinforcement, but we need 24. So we need eight ingots of cobalt, if my math is correct on that, to have melee protection one. And then projectile protection uh, is going to need molten amethyst bronze. Okay, what is that? Amethyst and copper. Oh, my. That's a new resource. We're gonna have to find amethyst, I guess. That sounds fun. All right, so let's do this. Um, I'm going to need more cobalt anyway, but if I got the gold upgrade going and I got the fire protection going, that would probably help a little bit for heading into the nether. So let's get some obsidian. I might need more of that. And let's get some seared brick. Now, is seared brick recipe like still a thing we can do with like just cobble or do I have to make like the proper seared brick? So I definitely do it with grout, but can you still like get seared brick from cobble or is that no longer a thing? Yeah, I might need to do it with grout. All right, so I'm just gonna get some more grout. How's you for, oh, we're low on gravel of all things. You know why? Because every time I mine gravel, I'm using the mining gadget and I frequently, uh, <laughs> I frequently wind up getting you know, flint, because looting is a thing. Uh, so let's do this. Let's get a little bit more gravel. And by the way, uh, quick note, you can absolutely turn off your fortune upgrade if you want, and then you can get more gravel easily, right? Isn't that cool? Let me go find some more gravel real fast. Well, well you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pop into the nether. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip the whole reinforcement upgrade thing, because I really want... Um, to number one, see if I can find a place with blazes. I'm still gonna die here though, aren't I? Probably. Okay, so where would be a good place to find blazes? I mean, there's this structure over here, which I have no idea what this is. And I'm like nervous to go exploring too much, but a place with blazes would be nice. And then there's also like up here, there's something-ish, right? Um, and where am I again? I'm right here. So if I looked to my west, that would be this way. And this is that really big-ish structure. And I should probably get out my shield. Because I see skeletons. Okay, that's cool.
So the really, oh my, that that would be a, that would be a death fall right there, folks. We don't want that. I don't like this biome. I don't like this biome because it's so hard to see everything. Hey, I was swinging. Come on! Oh, I was so close. All right, I'm out of here. Uh, what I'm going to do is hunt for blazes, and I think we're pretty much at the wrapping up point anyway, aren't we? Yes, we are. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go hunt for blazes, and I'm going to see what I can see. Uh, if I can find some blazes, that would be great. If I could find, like, a stronghold, that would be cool too. And I don't see one on the map, unless, I, unless it's there and I'm missing it. But I don't see a stronghold on the map, which... There's something here, but this is like... Maybe this is some kind of village or something? Because it doesn't look like a stronghold. It's something, but I don't think it's a stronghold. Oh, is this a stronghold? This might be it. Nether bricks? Yeah, this could be a stronghold up here, right? That's more than likely a stronghold. We're just going to have to figure out how to get there, because that's like a ways away. Um, maybe I'll make an ender. Hang on a sec. Travel staff. Yeah. I remember this thing being pretty cool. Shift and right click to short range teleport. What else we got by way of teleportation options? Yeah, we could waystone it. If we brought our waystones in here, if we could get to that place, that would be the way to do it. Yeah. I like that. That's what we're going to do. That's how I'm going to do it, guys. Next episode, we're going to come back and go on a probably very deadly nether adventure. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare myself by getting what I can in terms of protection. So I want to get some of those armor protection pieces. I think I have two waystones, if I'm not mistaken about this. I think I've found at least two, if not more than that. I've got three. That's even better. So we bring two into the nether. We put one by the nether portal. We put another waystone at the, um, the, 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 the fortress. And then we can teleport back and forth between them. Then we can farm some blazes, maybe find a blaze spawner. That would be cool. And uh, then we can work on ender tanks to get magma to power our base. And then we'll have all kinds of cool stuff happening. Right? I think so. For now, Doll 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time uh, to do more by way of this uh, crazy shenanigans thing. Uh, for now, though, don't forget, take it easy.